using the GRZ2, so the GLD. God, so many builds as of late. There we go. Uh, kind of crazy, actually. Um, I don't know what order I'm going to do them in. So, putting this on hold for a bit, um, probably for a couple of months. That needs some design work. Uh, realized I left a mess here. But pro primarily today what I'm looking for is actually distraction from work. So, um, that is loose, that's good. So, one of the things I didn't do last session was polish everything up. And as you can see it sticks a bit. And it's not as smooth as I'd like. This side's a bit better, but I think I want to go all in and have it sort of drop. So we're going to start with that and then we're going to go back to the manual and um, go on with the other remaining steps. <coughs> so as you can see, it sticks. That should just drop on its own. Um, it does once you get to an angle, but it's sort of is sticking quite badly. And then the arm itself is could do with a bit of work. There's a bit more friction there than I'd like. Actually, maybe these endpoints are working properly. Yeah, they are. Okay, so it's just the uh, the actual bottom swing arm that needs a bit of adjustment. So we're going to take this bit off the back off the back off. Um, I probably should send out the notifications that I'm streaming, but I'll be honest, no one actually ever turns up to these streams. So I don't know why I'd bother. Um, although, okay, so I was looking at my YouTube stats the other day, and big shout out to BMR3, um, giving a shout out to me. Um, really, really helped my numbers quite significantly, so I definitely appreciate that. Um, but the one thing I did notice is that the uh, between midnight and 1am, which is normally when the US comes online, that's when I tend to get a lot of people uh, watching my videos. So obviously the US market's a big one for me. Um, unfortunately, just with due to the fact that I like to sleep in on the weekends, the hours don't line up very well. And there is no way in hell you're going to give make me give up sleeping in on the weekends. So good luck there. So it's been a uh, a busy Friday was extremely busy for me. Um, the weekend ended up being extremely busy, and then this morning I walked into an absolute firefight. So. I'm actually looking forward to this because it's actually quite relaxing and a good way to spend my afternoon. Just also have to make sure that my uh, computer doesn't fall asleep or oh, turn the screen saver on because if that happens, I actually don't know what happens to the stream. So, okay, so that's a bit smoother. I'll polish it a tiny bit more just to be sure. And then I'm also going to touch up the end caps because if they apply enough pressure and pinch this this little pin here, that can also prevent it from moving smoothly. So you don't need to take much off. In fact, the less you can take off the better. Because the more you take off, the more it affects the accuracy of the parts. So um, bum, 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 bum. Okay, so that's doing fairly well there. Put that end, end cap on. These end caps are a bit fiddly, but uh, still overall this build process is pretty good. As a side note, I've... Um, found out about the uh, hand warmers, like people in the US probably know about them, but over here in Australia it's always normally very very warm, and this is probably the first winter I can remember in like five or six years where it's actually been cold during winter. There's normally very very little difference between our summer and our winter, oh that's got a spur on it, that's why. Um, and so yeah, you, you, like people go to the beach during winter here, um, just because it's too hot. <laughs> 
but this is probably the first winter in a while where, where it's actually been chilly and it's actually been kind of nice but um, Australian homes are not made for the cold so even if you've got central heating it tends to bleed off um, through windows and walls and everything to the point that it's nearly totally useless um, and I found the hand warmers have been absolutely wonderful for um, just taking the edge off the chill I'm pretty sure they're just silicon based which would be pretty awesome I right, just had to go on the back yes okay so I've got these the wrong way around that's fine Yeah, so we had bushfires in summer, then we've actually had, we've had the coronavirus, and now, I wouldn't say it's a big thing, but it's been pretty cold here, which is unusual. I'm surprised that's not causing people over here to panic. Like hell freezing over and all. Okay, let's do this pin as well while we're at it. And this pin's really, really smooth as well. So maybe it's just pinching. I'm gonna have to. That's the only thing I could think of. Oh, that's a nice trick. So if you've got the pin in there, um, it's a lot easier to grasp and maneuver. So. Oh. Unfortunately, this is going to be fiddly work. Um, but there's not much we can do about that. God, this kit just feels better than um, the DRZ2. In fact, just before I uh, started streaming, I was actually reading up on some reviews that other people have done of other atomic kits. Um, specifically, I was looking at the DRZ V3. Uh, no, DRZ? BRZ. So the belt driven uh, four wheel drive. And that is an absolute best. I love That's probably my favorite uh, Mini Z type of vehicle um, it's just fun the idea of a belt drive is just insane and the thing is just crazy 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 responsive but it's definitely not without its issues I remember it being better than the the DRZ V2 build but after reading um, that guy's review of it maybe I'm just kidding myself um, and I've kind of forgotten just how horrible that build was uh, but I mean, he finished with a comment that like he hoped it performed well enough that he forgot how bad the build was, and I'm guessing that's where I'm at. So I uh, I just like the chassis that much that I've forgotten how bad the initial build was. Okay, so that's that's going down on its own. Uh, I think I want some more work on that one, so let's just pop that off. And we'll go back to the drawing board on that one. Oh, it's stuck in there. There we go. So I actually do keep an eye out on my streaming numbers. Um, as I said, very few people turn up. And most of the people that do turn up, I actually know. And I chat out of band on various chat services. Um, but I do like to keep an eye out just in case there is something that new that does pop in. Uh, okay, that goes that way. So I'm also uh, streaming on Twitch in the I was it in uh, just chatting category, um, which is a bit of an impairment in itself because I am not young and I am not partially topless, which seems to be the majority of people streaming that session. And I don't think you want me to be either of those, so... Ah, there we go. That's popped in. But that's fine. I actually did see there was a radio car category on Twitch. Um, it just doesn't seem to be... used. And it's hard to tell if it's an actual game or if it's a, like the uh, actual physical in real life category for RC cars. I've actually been thinking about doing some in the field um, streaming as well and uh, looking into how I may facilitate that. OK, 
Okay, that's actually starting to bind a bit now that I've tightened it up. Oh no, okay. So there's a bit of a notch of a plastic. There's a bit of a notch in the plastic, but that's way above where the suspension should normally be operating. So yeah, I've been looking at in the field recording. Um, I don't just do 128, 127 scale cars. They're definitely my favorite. But I've also got, you know, that one's binding a bit. I've actually got uh, a lot of larger stuff as well. Uh, so I've got an eight wheel crawler. Um, in fact, where was that frame? So I actually did contemplate about making this uh, an eight wheeler as well. Um, it's definitely going four wheel drive steer uh, four wheel steering, but I think I'm going to keep that as just four wheels. Um, what else do I have? I've got a, a nice one eighth um, scale trophy truck, and the suspension on that articulates like crazy. And I just love watching the suspension on that go up and down, like, and just I I, I just run laps over uneven terrain just to watch the wheels go up and down and the body stay completely flat. So that's a lot of fun. Um, I've got the EB410, which is an absolutely incredible car to build. If you're ever looking for a nice easy build that just drives like crazy, um, I definitely recommend the Techno EB410. One of the best kits I've put together. Everything is so, so, so smooth, and the instructions are some of the best I've ever dealt with. So I'm going to vary up the polish in here. Let me have a look. Oh, I've also got a Kyosho. Um, Actually, this is an interesting story. So I've got a Kyosho Optima Turbo. Um, and I bought that because when I was very, very young, I used to see all the... Um, uh, so I had a couple of Japanese friends, and they used to have, like, the, the model kits, um, or, like, the, the latest um, uh, catalogs from Japan. And you always used to see, like, the little uh, toy... Well, not toy, the, the little cars that people had drawn as part of the instruction manuals and they always looked like an Optima Turbo and I never quite worked out what it belonged to at the time because I wasn't aware of the Kyosho brand. I knew of Tamiya um, but I didn't know of Kyosho and then all these years it's like um, I saw they were doing the re-release of the, uh, the Optima Turbo well, actually, I came across it via the, uh, the MB-010, um, which does have the Optima body. Um, so this is the larger scale of the, the Mini-Z buggy. <coughs> um, and like that, uh, the Optima Turbo or the, the Mini-Z buggy are the exact um, body that I used to see that everyone used to draw uh, in the instruction manuals and everything. So um, I had to have myself one of those. And that actually performs pretty well. Like the shocks on that are really, really, really nice. Um, and I do have a Kyosho Phantom, which is a 1 12th scale um, that I put an order in for the other day. Um, just because I was blown it, even though it was 1 12th scale, it's really, really, really tiny. And I actually do like my tiny RC cars. Like even in real life, I think a Mini would have to be one of my favorite cars just due to, due to the size and how cute the thing is, so. Um, I'm hoping the Kyosho Phantom is a bit of fun. Um, I spec'd up a nice drivetrain, uh, a nice engine package for it. Um, but I was kind of interested in it in that it's a pan car that's four wheel drive. It's a, yeah, so four wheel drive. Overall, it's actually a very, very small package, which I definitely appreciate because I don't have a lot of space. Um, and the smaller cars just mean the, uh, the larger tracks seem even larger, so. I don't need nearly as much space. Um, but it was, yeah, the four wheel drive set up with the chain drive is really, really interesting. And the, the size and just how few moving pieces were on the chassis were kind of interesting. Um, I was having a look at the SD Racing website and um, I do have a Tricon order from there. And I could have got a pan car from there as well, but uh, I'm kind of more interested in the Kyosho. Um, like the SD Racing one is nice, don't get me wrong. Get me wrong, but a four-wheel drive pan car is actually super interesting. So they're both working pretty well now. I think I've done that. And now that I've tightened it up, it's still pretty loose. So I think I've polished that off a bit, or enough. No, this side's still a bit tight. I mean, this is actually what burnt me with the uh, the DIZ V2. 
if I was just blasting through them, yeah, probably about four hours, maybe five hours. It did take a bit longer than I, I expected, but most of the effort just went into um, polishing and smoothing and everything, so. Um, which I must say, it's weird, but I'm actually enjoying it more on the GLD, and I can't, there's no real reason for that. Other than I think I probably got a bit too angry when making the, uh, the Atomic. Um, I, I have this love-hate relationship with uh, Atomic, or more, more specifically Miracle Mart. I've been burnt by Miracle Mart's customer support a couple of times because I don't have proper case management. So every time you email them, it's like the first time you've contacted them, which is just silly. They're, they're like, there's one thing where I put in a back order and then every three weeks I'd contact them for a status update. And the first thing they'd say is, oh, we don't have it on fire. Uh, we don't have any in stock. Um, let us cancel your order. Uh, let us refund you. Um, and it's like, I'd say, I have to go and say, please refer to the previous email chain, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I'm waiting for you to get it back in stock. Please don't cancel my order. Um, it's like, yeah, sometimes I suspect they didn't even read my emails. So let's put the arms in first. Um, and like the, the DRZ is, I love it. Like the, the belt, belt drive is really, really nice, but, um, getting their parts for that and, uh, yeah, they, they make, Atomic just make it difficult for no reason whatsoever. Okay. Let's try that. Which is a shame because I, with a bit of work, it could be brilliant. And if it is true that they're not maintaining their tools, and keep in mind this is something I, I'm theorizing. I've noticed some quality issues and they seem to be related to degradation of the molds over time, which would indicate to me that they're not maintaining their tools and their molds. Because um, I have bought parts over an extended period of time and sort of noticed this. Uh, then that's a real shame. Uh, and the solution to that is not necessarily maintaining the molds, but looking at alternate manufacturing methods. So I've been pretty impressed, impressed with uh, SD Racing uh, and his channel. And more specifically, uh, his just-in-time fabrication techniques. So he 3D prints a lot of stuff, um, like C-hubs and everything. And they've, in terms of strength, they've held up, but... Probably the more important thing is he doesn't need to keep a lot of inventory on hand. Um, he can just print it on demand. And that I find really, really, really exciting for a, f a small scale manufacturer, which is where I want to end up being in the next couple of years. Uh, that definitely saves costs quite significantly. Um, it means you don't have to make a commitment up front, which may or may not be wrong, um, which is therefore uh, business risk. Um, so it helps protect against that, um, but allows you to, uh, it's still too tight. That's better. Okay, I'm going to go with that. I'm happy with that. Yeah, so uh, it helps eliminate business risk, which is always really, really, really good. Um, and it means it's cheaper and yeah, a whole, a whole bunch of things. So. I'm definitely looking into that. Um, I've definitely been looking into a couple of things. So I actually own several 3D printers. Um, I've got your standard FDM, which is the filament-based printers. Um, and then I've also got a backup FDM printer because the one thing they don't tell you about FDM printers is uh, you can break parts. And when you break parts, you need a 3D printer to print the parts. And depending on the, the type of breakage you've got, you may not have a printer to be able to print those parts. And so I've actually got a very, very cheap second backup printer um, just to print parts for the primary one, if it ever fails. Um, and then I've got a, an SLA high quality printer and I've done some testing. So oh, let me grab one of my bigger prints. So I'm a big MechWarrior fan and I printed off this small little miniature. It's a bit hard to tell, um, I suppose. Can I with the lighting? Oh, 
I should really get my light pad out, but so I've got like a small miniature. The uh, the quality and detail on this is absolutely insane. Um, then I've got a much larger version that's solid resin. And you'll see the legs missing because I printed this as solid resin and this is weighs probably about 300 grams. And I dropped it and the leg snapped off. Um, but the detail on this is crazy. So this has been good in giving me a rough idea of the quality I can expect when in printing bodies. And it's actually good that the, the leg snapped off there. Because I realized at 300 grams, if you do drop it from half a meter height, you, it will snap. And I can work around that with structure, or I can work around that with weight reduction techniques. But now that I know it's an issue, I, I can avoid it, which is a good thing. So we're going to get back onto the uh, the actual instructions. And, like, I, I hate to say this, but I'm going to apologize because I'm all over the place tonight. And I hate apologizing for this sort of stuff. It's one of the things that really annoys me with you, uh, YouTubers and um, people on Twitch. It's like... I, you don't need to apologize, you just need to continue. Um, but in the same breath as someone on the other side of the camera, uh, there's not actually much you can say beyond that. So it's just, and you want to say something, so it's not really easy to just get it out. Um, that's a bottom plate. But uh, yeah, as, as I said, I'm using this to try and relax. Um, it's been a particularly busy day for me the last couple of days. And I've had to pull off some absolute miracles, so... There's our arms. So we're actually now working on the front assembly. So the front suspension assembly. It's not clear. Maybe there's another arm. Oh, maybe it's this bag. There is a springs. Oh god, I wish I was asleep in bed right now. I'm too tired for this. Um, it's not you. Let's just start dumping out bags, I think. What else do I need? I just need the arms. That's you. It's you. Okay, so that was the right bag. Bum, 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 bum. So the lighting setup's working good today. I'm still not very happy with... Uh, maybe a bit more. Still playing with camera setup, so... I did one thing over the weekend and ordered um, some big dividers to organize all my parts. You've probably seen my mini containers. And I love this. Uh, I love these, but... Um, for do I have them I have one mainly for the these axles these are a pain to store um, they don't seem to fit in anything so I went off and spec'd out some proper storage units and the advantage is I'll be able to have them behind the camera there but then have the camera on top with more of an angle pointing down uh, so we'll see if that changes the quality of the stream at all um, I'm hoping it does uh, it's more of those instructions there are uh, I have to make them a certain size, otherwise they're somewhat unreadable. Um, and the other funny thing, and this has to do with content creation, so while I'm doing that, I'd better probably just check the bearings. I need B13s. Um, the other thing with content creation is I also have to keep in mind not just uh, PCs, but also mobile phones. And with mobile phones, you have to be significantly more zoomed in. Now, if you've ever seen... Um, uh, a YouTube video where someone's and you're on a PC and someone's face just seems abnormally large I would almost guarantee uh, that that person is optimizing their content purely for mobile so that's a 10 mil um, the reason being is on mobile you do have to make everything that tiny bit larger because even though the screen is higher res, the uh, the actual physical size of the thing you're looking at and the distance away from your eyes is ends up everything ends up being a bit smaller. So you you increase the size of the content to compensate. But if you're like me and you've got very very large computer monitors, 
then that person's head is actually larger than my head in real life uh, when in front of me on the screen and it just feels imposing so um, I optimize for PC um, because I don't really want to tackle mobile uh, content creation at this point in time and the feedback I've generally had is especially given the length of my videos oh, it's gonna need some polishing um, so a lot of people like to grab some lunch uh, and then watch the, the, these videos over lunch so that's why I'm trying to aim for half an hour blocks but to be honest I have trouble hitting an hour so <laughs> um, and then someone said oh why don't you just like double time your format and it's like well a lot of the value people get is actually from what I'm saying more than anything else 3025 3025s um, so you can only go so far with that uh, in terms of speeding up the content and then I'll, if I do speed up the content the pitch of my voice goes up and I have to compensate by bringing that down and then I have to, opt then I have to compensate like some people are able to comprehend far people talking faster than others and then I have to work out what works for everyone and it's much easier for you to just speed up or slow down the playback in YouTube itself rather than me trying to guess what everyone wants and needs. So quick tip if you're watching this and you're finding this very very slow you can actually speed up and slow down the content in YouTube and I would recommend trying 1.25 times 1.5 times and if you're really really good uh, double time and that will allow you to get through a lot of content really really quickly because I am actually going fairly slowly today so oh god these are just screwing into the plastic so nicely so much better than the all right the, the plastics and screwing uh the ball heads is definitely light years ahead of uh, the atomics so that's i know that for with certainty um let's do some turnbuckles Check they're all the same size. Yes, they are. So let's, I was going to say, let's put a market on where I am. And you're probably not familiar with that term unless you're in finance. You're probably more familiar with the term like, let's bet on how long this is going to take me. Um, so we are currently 30 minutes in. Wow, time absolutely flies. I think I've only got half an hour to 40 minutes left of, en of energy left in me today, so we're going to go with that. And we're going to see if I make that or go past that. Um, there we go. Most of it, I'm running out of things to say today. Like, this is a bit of an unplanned stream. I'm, um, it's annoying that the GLD came out last week um, and that I was busy this weekend. Uh, the reason being is this week I'm doing incredibly long shifts at work, so I don't have the time to shoot video after, after work, um, which is annoying. And I did want to get this out as soon as possible. And I could say that that was so that people could uh, experience this footage and blah, 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 learn how to build it and everything. But to be honest, it's mainly for the YouTube views. Still trying to build up the channel a bit. Um, and then try and get away from these long videos and start editing them a bit more so they're a bit more contained. So I have the roars up still, but also have an abbreviated um Abbreviated version, probably a cut down version with just the uh, the coherent <laughs> and um, important points. As I said, I do want to try and hit half an hour. If I can hit half an hour, then people can just watch over their lunch breaks, and that that seems to be where my channel is headed. Is the slightly longer form content that people can just put on the on in the background and do other things while that's happening. Um, and then also just focus on scratch building. 
and just doing the latest uh, model kits and um, basically providing advice that's not written down anywhere uh, to allow people to build these themselves. Um, I actually did purchase some domain names about two years ago. No, one year ago, sorry. So I actually do have blitzworks.racing. Um, I currently use blitz.works. And I've got some subdomains on there where I point people in various directions. So I've got like Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and Live. And I use those links rather than um, ball joint A112s. I use those uh, links rather than the channel provided ones because it allows me a bit of a bit more flexibility in where they point, and also allows me to assess. Um, uh, the sort of traffic numbers that are going through independently of like YouTube or Twitch or whatever um, which is good so I've been working on probably for the last six months writing down a lot of this information um, and turning it into a website um, I know there's a couple of mini said websites out there but uh, I'm trying to focus on the hobby as a whole and I'm still trying to make Still trying to decide if I just focus purely on Kyosho stuff or if I include some of the more custom stuff. Um, and the reason that's important is that determines what the structure of a website is. Uh, do I break it down by manufacturer? Um, now, when I say Mini Z, I'm talking about 128th and 7th scale more generally because I do have WL Toys tips and tricks there, uh, guides for Atomic, GL Racing and whatnot, but I'm, I just casually refer to them as all being Mini Z. But uh, I could definitely see myself branching out into 120, uh, putting 124th information on there. Um, I don't have any modeling, it's more about the racing. Um, and I, the racing type is fine enough, like you'd think there's only grip and drift, right? But when you start to break it down, there's actually a couple more categories such as uh, Jim Carner, which is racing around small uh, courses and trying to beat the clock. Um, there is actually Rally, which you tend to see more on the 787s, uh, say the 989s, um, mainly because you can bash them a lot more and because they're so cheap you don't really care too much if you cause some damage to them. Um, I really should do a review of the 989. That's, that's an interesting chassis. Um, I did end up picking one up. And I must admit, I'm having a lot of trouble seeing why people like them. Uh, even at that price, the Mini Z just outperforms it so, so, so much better. Um, and what I don't like about it is you have to be on the throttle the entire time. The moment you come off the throttle uh, with the brushed model, uh, the thing just comes to a dead stop. And I don't like that driving style. I very much like the, um, the car continues on under its, just its own momentum. Um, which is why I like the gecko frame and why I like my this because even though they're crawlers the thing that sets those crawlers apart from others is uh, they just they don't stop like a lot of other kits have the uh, the worm drives um, to drive the uh, it's not going in straight let's back that out uh, worm a worm gear to drive the wheels and the moment you come off the power the wheels just lock in place and to me that's a bit too easy uh, I like having to catch the car on the brake um, and being able to come off the brake and letting the car just continue to roll forward a bit more so oh you know why I'm probably putting these yeah I'm putting it in backwards that's why so these pins are threaded differently on each side and let me just indicate with a mouse uh, these things here and I was trying to put that on backwards which is why it wasn't threading in so yeah uh, yeah I, I do like that um, that forward rolling ability now the the Kiyoshi Mini 4x4 four by, four by four, um, a lot of the crawler guys that I'll be honest it sound like, sounded like they were being paid by Kyosho. Uh, and I'll go why to why why I think that in a minute. Um, they noted that uh, if you the car just keeps on rolling, um, and I found yes that is accurate, but it's not 
it doesn't roll that much forward. Um, it does allow for a bit of engine breaking and whatnot, but um, the reason I say that it feels like they were paid is I was looking at the Scale Builders uh, channel because he did a review, and then there was another uh, guy who was watching. I was watching a different video for him today, and he he was just reviewing some mini crawlers. And it's funny how with both of those guys, they own the SCX twenty four. They've got the Enduro Tundra or whatever it's called that just came out. That's one twenty fourth scale as well. Um, and they also they really really like the Kyosho Mini Z four by four. But you see all the other cars except that more often on their channel. Um, so, especially when they're out and about. Oh, that's okay. I've got to be. I've got to think about how I thread that on. It's that way. Yep. Um, so I find that a bit funny. Like, okay, they liked it a lot and they do recommend it, but in the same breath, you don't ever see them using it after the initial review. That's that way. Okay. That's what's coming undone. Yes, okay, cool. So that's done. So we're going to polish these pins and get that assembled. Uh, what's involved in that? How does that go together? That just slides in. And that's captured because that, that hole there is smaller than the other side. Can you see my finger? Yes, good. So if this was mobile, I'd actually have to be like this close. And this is only about 10 centimeters away from the camera. And while I do like that, uh, it's hard to work with. Um, I have to work out what angle the camera is at and the depth and everything. And I'm not discounting that I, I won't ever do mobile, but just at the moment, it's a lot easier to do PCs where I expect the display to be a lot larger. So that pin's good. Uh, let's see, no one's watching, which is good. Oh, and I did get the channel, the, um, video name right for once it's one of the annoying things about streaming is um especially when i swap between different content i have to remember to update the title and i do that a lot now they actually provide measurements for how far the turnbuckle should be going out so let's try and obey them somewhat oh wow they weren't really tight perfect i'm more than happy to oblige Okay, is that 19.7 mil? Not that I'm going to be able to measure the 0.7, but where are they measuring to? Outer, outer. Okay, maybe a couple of rotations, but. Just gonna bend this slightly. I just realized that um, I've got a feeling I didn't have them going dead straight, so. Um, and they're both bent in the same direction. Part of the issue here is that the turnbuckles just don't have enough plastic on the bottom. Which makes it a bit difficult. do that but that's fine because as you screw them in they, they sort of line up anyway and straighten out so cool i'm just eyeballing that because i've actually run out of batteries in my calipers but um that was between 19 and 20 so i'm going to call that close enough and once we've done that uh, once I've screwed them both in, I'm going to just double check the straightness um, because this is the front suspension assembly and these were, I bent the, they were off in different directions. So one was to the left, one was to the right. And when I put them on, they aren't going, so one was forward and one was back and that's going to end up with a twisted front uh, suspension setup. Um, so as long as when I tighten them up, they all align a bit better, I should be fine. 
Uh, maybe I need some music in the background or something just to make this room a bit more interesting because uh, especially when I'm tired, I'm not the most talkative. I'm actually having to force myself to talk a bit. Once again, it's like just the nature of my job. I do a lot of uh, technical talk at work and people don't understand or appreciate how draining that is to be talking at such a high level for extended periods of time. Okay, that's good. Polished side is down, which is good. That's straight. That's straight. Okay, so that's good news. As you tighten that up, that'll actually uh, realign itself, which is really, really good. So once again, I'm going to call, say, that's uh, one, definitely one in favor of the GL racing stuff. Um, oh, that's tight. That binds quite a bit. So I haven't even put the pin in yet, and that's already binding. So we're going to um, enlarge that a bit. And it's better on that side, but not perfect. So we're going to pull out the uh, 3000 grit paper and just go over it. So far I've found I haven't had to take much off with the GL racing stuff. Um, only a very, very tiny amount and it comes good. And I definitely like that because I wasted so much time and took so much material off on the atomic stuff. To the point I was starting to get worried a couple of times. Probably do the uh, the Bob Ross of um, Mini Z creation and like, make happy li little swing arms. Okay, a bit more. Good. No one's watching. Well, at least not until I get it onto YouTube. I should really do some sped up footage of this. I think if I do. So most of my videos are about two hours long, which is 120 minutes. If I do that at 10 speed, that'll be 12 minutes. And if I do it at 5 speed, that'll be 24 minutes. And maybe if I had a, an interesting soundtrack and a bit of voice commentary, maybe that'll be, maybe that'll work. One of the problems I've previously had with my videos is um, those three minute crawling clips, for example, um, or anything I've done on my channel that looks like it's... Um, had a bit of video editing. Uh, takes a pretty large amount of time for me to do. Um, I don't have the best video editing pipeline. Uh, and in fact, I was actually experimenting with alternate video pipelines. Um, and when I mean alternate, I mean not point and click, but you, you type up a script and it just works everything out for you. And I didn't quite have the tooling down pat. Um, and it may seem weird to do it that way, not just to use a uh, one of the standard utilities to do that but um, the advantage in doing so is that once I've nailed it um, it's all automatic I can say just here are all my videos follow this script and put it all together for me automatically so the pay the, like the long-term payoff is absolutely incredible but short term it was just really killing me in terms of video production that's why I've sort of done a 180 and gone back to trying to find content that I don't have to do much video editing on um, although I still want to go back and do some more edited smaller clips. Um, even if I have to use the GUI apps, I'm definitely going to go back to that. So, um, But for the moment, I've just got enough builds that I can stick to the, uh, the longer form videos. Okay, so that's smooth. And then I put the pin in and it seizes up. So the pin needs to be adjusted. Let's grab that. Actually, I'm going to pull out some better... There you go. Use my uh, Leatherman. Do you like my Leathermans? I also like the really, really weird Leathermans, which is funny. So this is a one-handed tool. And I actually use the one-handed feature of it quite a bit. Um, but it got panned quite a bit by the, uh, I guess you'd call it the knife community. Um, for not being, like, for being too large and too heavy. But personally, I find it's perfectly sized for me, so... Um, I've got the wave. I didn't like the shape at all. Um, didn't like the heft at all. Uh, the one-handed tool's been nearly perfect for me. So I'm not going to go into much into knives. It's a very, very personal thing. Um, 
I don't think there's really an ultimate knife. It just depends on what you're doing. But I, uh, I do use the one-handed tool a lot. Do I have the other one? Um, I've got another one with an integrated hammer and a knife sharpener, and I use that one quite a bit as well. But I, I found for... Um, uh, just for doing the mini Z stuff, uh, they've been perfect. Like I do have normal modeling pliers, but these I just happen to have always within arm's reach anyway. Um, and I use a box cutter on this quite a bit, which is good. And then I use the wire strippers on the smaller squirt. Um, and then I had, I think it's a new K8, which I don't actually know where I've put it down, but that, that's um, been an absolutely brilliant little unit as well. Okay, so let's put you on. Okay, and you're falling down now. So if we put you on there. And we put the pin in, like. Okay, I'm going to start doing stuff in the camera because the last couple of sessions I've been very, very slack about that. So we put that in like that. And there's still a lot of binding there. And you only get the binding once you put the pin in. So I'm going to actually physically move it around a bit and see if that fixes it. No. So we take one of the pins uh, on the tweezers and we just push it in the back and there's a tiny hole and that just pushes it out a, t out a tiny bit and then you can grasp it. And then you can grasp it. There we go. So now we just have to locate that binding. Yeah, okay. So the plastic's still a bit tight. Um, do I have anything of a lower grit? I should do, I just can't remember where I've put it. Um, okay, we're going to just persist with this then. Uh, do I want to get in here? I think I do. So that means I need to apply pressure and the best way to apply pressure is to take a body clip off an overland and use that. Actually I can it's not the best way but it's the only flat piece of plastic I can see. Oh actually you know what? I'm just gonna use a file on this. Because I won't have to take off much. And I just want to clean up the surface a bit. So this is a rather aggressive uh, file compared to the sandpaper and so you'll have to be careful because sandpaper is sort of measured in how much it takes off in a single stroke um, and because this is aggressive it'll take off a lot of material if you push too hard. So let's go like that, double check I got the right side and I did, it's looking good. I actually wonder if it's binding to the plastic on the inside, which would be annoying. Which means we're likely not going to get through much of the front suspension. It's what, 8.30 now and I've been recording for 48 minutes, so... Especially if I... I'm going to stop the stream here, uh, actually. What I just did was fired a pin across the room and... I've got a lot of stuff over there, so it's actually going to be very, very difficult to retrieve. Yeah. So thanks for joining me. <laughs> and I'll be continuing this tomorrow in that case, if I can find the pin. If I can't, I might have to put an order in with GL Racing. Well, actually, do I have a spare pin? I don't think I do. Don't think I'm that lucky. Where did I put them? Oh, here. No, it wasn't that. Actually, where did I put those parts? It's not those screws, not those ones. Oh, here we go. Oh, maybe I'm lucky. No, okay, I'm not lucky. I'm going to have to go find that, and that's going to take me hours. So I'll let you all go here, and um, 
I think I'll probably continue on with the polishing offline and then when I come but I won't continue on with any more steps so when I come back we will be working on the rest of the front suspension so see you later